Hello and welcome. I am Chakshu Roy and you are watching Laws in the Making on Rajasabha TV. Today on the show, we are discussing the draft seeds bill of 2019. To discuss the seeds bill, I have on the show with me Mr. Alok Sinha, former Chief Managing Director, Food Corporation of India, and Dr. B. S. Tomar, Head and Principal Scientist, Division of Vegetable Science, Indian Council of Agricultural Research, New Delhi. The Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare has put a draft seeds bill 2019 in the public domain for feedback and comments. Availability of good quality seeds to farmers is a necessary condition for boosting agricultural output. The bill seeks to promote the production and supply of quality seeds through the registration of seeds and adherence to certain minimum standards by seed vendors. The draft bill will replace the 1966 Seeds Act. The draft seeds bill aims to regulate the quality of seeds sold. Under the bill, a national register of seeds will be maintained. All variety of seeds for sale will have to be registered except in two cases. One, when they are farmers varieties which have been traditionally cultivated and evolved by farmers in their fields. And two, seeds produced by farmers other than those for sale under a brand name. Seed producers, seed processing units, seed dealers and fruit nurseries also have to be registered. पहले जो सीड एक्ट में एग्रीकल्चर की डेफिनेशन एग्रीकल्चर एंड हॉर्टिकल्चर सिर्फ था तो इस बार उसमें इन्होंने फॉरेस्ट्री को और मेडिसिनल और एरोमेटिक प्लांट्स को भी शामिल किया है दूसरा रजिस्ट्रेशन का इसमें एक वो लेके आए हैं अब उसका थोड़ा सा इसमें कुछ अभी कुछ चीज़ें हैं जो डिस्कशन जिसमें चाहिए पहले उसमें सेक्शन फाइव में जो सीड एक्ट था उसमें नोटिफिकेशन ऑफ द वेराइटीज वॉज देयर वन ऑफ द प्रोविजन बट इन दिस केस द रजिस्ट्रेशन हैज़ बीन मेड कंपल्सरी The draft bill specifies that central government may notify minimum limits of germination, genetic and physical purity and seed health for any seed variety. These standards will not apply to seeds produced by farmers other than those for sale under a brand name. The government may also specify the label on the packets or containers to indicate that such seed conforms to the standards. You know since the seed industry will be regulated and if the regulation provisions are well implemented it will be for the good of the farmer i mean everywhere it is the regulatory laws they have to be impl implemented well and on time otherwise a regulation by itself can lead to all kinds of what was once upon a time called the license raj that pe that some functionaries at some levels of the state system may not be as helpful as they are supposed to be the draft seeds bill provides the setting up of a central seed committee this committee will enforce seed registration and set standards for certification and testing the committee will also advise the central and state governments on matters related to seeds programming and planning seeds development and production export and import of seeds such committees will also be set up at the state level and they will keep a register of seed varieties that have been cultivated in their state seeds are the foundation of uh, policy discussions around agricultural output uh, farmers welfare food security uh, dr tomar i wanted to begin the program with you and ask you as to what is the current nature of regulation of seeds in the country uh, we had a seed act in 1966 which is working in the country and uh, the basic uh, nature of the seed bill 1960 was to provide the basic requirement of the agriculture that is seed because seed is a basic input for uh, agriculture development so since then this act has supported in various ways and the productivity of the farm has gone up uh, if we see our uh, achievements uh, in 1950 we are having 50 million ton of food grain production and today we have 287 million ton while the agricultural area has come down and currently it is 140 plus minus million hectare in the country and the population has gone up uh, so that way the seed has played important role in 
productivity enhancement and profitability of the Indian farming. So, the seed bill has supported uh, a cause of the agriculture and uh, ensure the availability. If I go back to the 1963 when National Central Seed Corporation was established and uh, then it was renamed at National Seeds Corporation. Basically in improvement uh, maize, sorghum, palmate these were the for uh, first mandated crop where lot of in, uh, uh, research investment has been made by the government of India and they have generated a very good quality of uh, hybrids. So, at national level there was a need who will take the multiplication. So, government of India has created a central seed corporation which is renamed as a national seeds corporation and uh, it has discharges their duties very well and uh, availability of quality seed of hybrid maize, palmulate and uh, sorghum and later on wheat. Uh, it has did a tremendous uh, job for the country and uh, quality seed was supplied and uh, the productivity has gone up. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Sinha, 1906, uh, you know, uh, the 66 Act was perhaps, you know, the legislative attempt which is now being overhauled. There was a seeds bill which was, you know, introduced in parliament in 2004. Yeah. For a variety of reasons, you know, it, not get, it could not get passed. There was another attempt in 2010, 2011 to get it passed. Uh, you know, that also did not happen and now we are at the stage where a new seeds bill is being conceptualized. What do you think is the idea behind, you know, moving away or improving upon the 1966 Act to the current one? I think since 1966, I mean, it's been uh, more than 50 years. Agriculture itself has uh, multiplied tremendously in both scope and output. I mean, as Dr. Thomas said, from about 60 million tons, we have now, we are touching 300 million tons. Horticulture also, we have crossed 300 million tons. So, as it becomes bigger and bigger, and as the All India market uh, cuts across the provincial boundaries, it is likely to become a very big business. Now, in this big business, if there is no regulation or if there is partial regulation, then there would be all kinds of spurious companies which will come in and they will be selling inferior seeds to the farmers. So, there is a great need to regulate it in the interest of the farmer and in the interest of enhancing agriculture and horticulture output. Of course, regulation means it should be successful regulation. It should not lead to merely a license raj as if some government functions will go and certify one seed as good and another seed as bad without recourse to any technical benchmark. So, the mechanism for certification should be put in place very well. Of course, there are some other issues which perhaps do not form a comprehensive part of the draft bill. For example, the farmer, if the farmer is not happy with the performance of the seed that he has bought, now then the farmer has to go somewhere for compensation. Now there are two points. One is the standing committee had said that seeking the compensation should not be merely from the Consumer Protection Act. They should be specially equipped tribunals to do it. Even apart from that, who will go to get the compensation? The definition of a farmer in the draft bill is someone who owns uh, agricultural land. Now, half the uh, farmers in India who are doing cultivation on their own are sharecroppers. So, suppose you are the landlord, I am the sharecropper and I have got bad seed, who goes to get the composition, you or me and suppose you go and get it. Now, there is a historic conflict between the landlord and the sharecropper. You might pocket it, I may not get it. And, and possibly also there are, you know, other laws which have tried to address this issue. So, for example, uh, you know, uh, the Land Acquisition Act also talked about compensation not only for land owners, but people who are also dependent on the land. Yes. Right? Uh, uh, Dr. Tomar, you know, one of the things that has been talked about is that the new draft, the draft bill is going to provide for a certain set of standards and norms. But what are the current set of standards and norms that are followed? Because I think there is a seeds control order under the Essential Commodities Act, the some bit of it is regulated under that. And then I think there is one or two other legislation 
which are in the regulatory framework when it comes to seeds. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yes. Uh, we had a seed control order 1983, uh, which have certain uh, inbuilt mechanism uh, to deal the market uh, segment, uh, how to deal with the seed. Uh, if there is any shortage of seed in one part of the country and excess in other part of country, through the seed control order, we can restrict uh, and we can divert the the available seed to the other part of the country. And besides that, uh, there was a provision that you have to have a registration with the agriculture department uh, about your dealership. You have to display the stock regularly to show the availability price etc. So, seed control is one mechanism to market the seed. But uh, the other mechanism which were placed in Seed Act 1966 was the uh, monitoring and regulation part during production, processing and uh, 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 packaging. So, during uh, seed certification, seed certification was one of the mechanism uh, to control the uh, production, quali production of quality seed under field condition and when it uh, harvested it reached to the processing plant and uh, what level of processing is required, how the uh, quality of seed has to be determined. So, that is the mechanism provisions are available in Seed Act and Seed uh, Certification Agency are doing uh, their responsibility in this sector. So, it, it is one mechanism to ensure the production of the quality seed and uh, during field production as well as during processing packaging and seed control order take care of the uh, marketing uh, need of the seed in the country. Besides uh, these two provisions that in 1988 another new uh, uh, bill was introduced uh, what is called a new seed policy 1980 which enforced in 1989. Basically that policy uh, impetus was on the uh, um, enhancing the availability of the quality seed of horticultural crop whether vegetable crops. Uh, fruit crops or uh, floriculture crop. So, that uh, policy has uh, supported very well and uh, the data available with the NHB if we see that after the introduction of this uh, new seed policy 1988 their impact has start showing in vegetable crops very quickly and uh, the production level is starts rising and uh, that was the period after 2000 uh, vegetable production has gone up uh, in the country and today we are reaching 200, 187 million ton of vegetable production in total horticulture production has been uh, 300 million ton plus. Okay, uh, uh, which is now one of the things you know uh, the Dr. Tomer is talking about is quality of seeds yeah. and quality of seeds is something you know that has to be tested on the ground rather than centrally. What do you think is the role uh, of you know qualified or skilled manpower uh, at the state level when it comes to uh, you know checking on the quality or the nutritional uh, or, or the genetic uh, quality of seeds? You know, as I said, <coughs> the certification process has to be very good and the people who are going to man the certification agency have to be technically very efficient. Right now, I think in many of the states, there is no certification mechanism available because the concerning government agency is in doldrums in that particular state. So, once the regulation by the new seed act comes into being with, uh, uh, with an accompanying certification process, the certification process has to be good. So, clearly the key to the, you know, to the functioning of the new law will be as to how the certification mechanism works on the ground. Yes. Okay. It's time for us to head into a break. When we come back, we will discuss the compensation provisions of the bill and earlier recommendations of the Parliamentary Standing Committee. Welcome back. On the program today, we are discussing the Draft Seeds Bill 2019. The draft bill seeks to regulate the quality of seeds during the production, distribution, sale, import and export. It will replace the 1966 Seeds Act. 
The draft bill specifies that seed producers, distributors and vendors have to disclose the expected performance under certain given conditions for all registered varieties. If a registered variety of seed fails to perform to expected standards, the farmer can claim compensation from the producer, dealer, distributor or vendor under the Consumer Protection Act 1986. There are many factors which lead to crop failure. And one has to define it very, very objectively. And in a situation where we do not have proper documentation, traceability and record keeping system on farms, it becomes very difficult to justify what was the reason for failure. And more than that, I will say that compensation is only coming when seed, bad seed is reaching to the farmer. But the law is silent how to remove bad seeds from the market. There is no provision of uh, bad seed recall from the market. There is no warning system. There is no communication system mentioned in the law. In case if lab is finding that seed is bad, how it will be communicated to farmer that don't buy this lot or this brand or this variety of seed. And there is no provisioning. So compensation is basically a postmortem, which is generally not effective. The draft seeds bill was first tabled in 2004 and later referred to a standing committee that same year. The government circulated a list of amendments to the bill in 2010 and 2011. The 2004 bill is still pending in Rajya Sabha. The two main recommendations of the standing committee were a compensation provision through specially designated arbitration tribunal or a compensation committee and seed crop insurance and a price regulatory provision to ensure that farmers are not charged arbitrary price by the seed producer or supplier. As we all know, the most important thing is the most important thing. If the seed is available in the right place, if the farmer gets the right price, then the seed will be solved by the seed. So, the new seed bill, which has been added to the new seed bill, which has been added to the new seed bill, as you will talk about the compensation, or as the seed health has been added to the new seed bill, and the penalties have been added to the new seed bill, and the penalties have been added. तो इससे निश्चित रूप से जो स्पोरियस सीड बेचते थे मिसब्रांडेड सीड बेचते थे या घटिया गुणवत्ता का बीज बेचते थे उसमें जरूर उस पर अंकुश लगेगा और निश्चित तौर पर उसमें सीड की गुणवत्ता बढ़ेगी सीड की उपलब्धता लेकिन हमें इंश्योर करनी पड़ेगी क्योंकि इस एक्ट में सभी प्रोविजन हैं लेकिन जब इन सभी चीज़ों को मानते हुए हमें ये भी कहीं ना कहीं एक्ट में ये देखना पड़ेगा कि भाई उसकी उपलब्धता भी इंश्योर रहे किसान के लिए तभी ये सभी काम चीज़ें लागू होंगी Persons who violate any provisions of the draft bill and sell seeds which do not conform to the specified standards will be punished with a fine of between Rs 25,000 and 1 lakh rupees. Persons furnishing false information regarding standards, misbranded seeds or supplying seeds which are spurious or not registered will be punished with up to one year imprisonment or with a fine of up to 5 lakh rupees or both. Dr. Tomo, before we ended the first section of this program, we were talking about how seeds are important for farmers. And while we talk about seed quality, while we talk about compensation, you know, what exactly are the provisions that farmers need to look at when it comes to the seed spill? Uh, first, we have to uh, see the farmer's interest. The farmer's interest is uh, for good quality seed. Farmer wants to have a good quality seed of a good variety. So one uh, component is uh, development of variety which is uh, taken care of by Indian Council of Agriculture Research and State Agriculture University and the technology generated through them uh, tested in uh, All India Coordinated Improvement Program. So to, to establish uh, the performance uh, because uh, the performance uh, compensation is uh, the contentious issue in the earlier uh, 2010 seed bill. And uh, it was attempted to address because uh, some concerns are there and that the concern are uh, suppose a good quality seed was supplied and farmer has not planted on time or there was a shortage of application of nutrient or irrigation or rainfall like that. So there was this is the contentious uh, the, the seed supplier claim that we have supplied genetically pure seed and uh, we have given our required information as per the act through labeling. 
but uh, farmer is not well educated and there are some lapses at farmers level. So, that has become a very uh, contentious issue among the farmer and seed producer. This is one concern which need uh, uh, to be addressed uh, through the new seed bill also. And uh, second was the, the, uh, the efforts made uh, in the availability of the quality seed uh, by the seed companies or government of India's organization. Uh, National Seed Corporation, State Seed Corporation, uh, we have to see that level also, okay, how much uh, uh, we have to develop those agencies or the departments which can cater the need of the uh, implementation of the new seed bill. This is one issue we have to uh, see that. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Sena, one of the things that we always talk about is when we are looking at a legislation we look at as to what will be the impact of the legislation on the private sector and also on the public sector. <coughs> and there are players in the seed industry on both sides of the thing. So, what do you think, you know, uh, when they are looking at this bill, what are the provisions that they should, you know, look at and focus on more closely? You know, in this matter, there are basically three stakeholders. One is the seed supplier, which includes the seed company. One is the farmer who will buy the seed and use it. One is the government mechanism which will regulate the relationship between the two. Now, uh, uh, there is a very nice saying which is popular nowadays called ease of business. The ease of business has to be there not only for the corporate sector but for the farmer also. So, therefore, while the farmer would need good certification and an easy compensation seeking process, the company which makes and sells the seeds and is therefore uh, open to being sued for low performance also needs some kind of uh, legal protection from uh, false cases. So therefore, suppose I am a farmer and I have got seeds and I say that the seed did not perform and then I go to seek compensation. I must be able to prove that it is due to the bad seed and not because I did not put in enough fertilizer, I did not put in enough pesticide, I did not irrigate the field on time, etc, etc. So, therefore, the various components of the inputs that each stakeholder has to put in has to be uh, outlined very well, both for the farmer and the seed supplier. Okay. Uh, you know, Dr. Verma, one of the things, you know, we were talking about earlier was as to what will be the kind of packaging because you know only when a farmer looks at the packaging of a seed and has the required information. So, what is the kind of packaging that the bill specifies should be there when it comes to seeds? In uh, seed bill uh, 2019 uh, draft bill, this is one requirement that uh, any seed offered to the sale should be packed. This is one mandatory requirement. But in this requirement, farmers uh, is exempted. If farmer wants to produce the seed, market the seed, he can do that. He has a freedom in this uh, new seed bill uh, and new draft that he can multiply, he can market, he can share, he can uh, give in replacement, but uh, he has restriction, restriction that he cannot go in a branded form. That is one restriction over the farmer. He can do all these things, multiply, distribution, market. Uh, but it should not be in a uh, in a labeled form. So, this is one differentiation. So, farmers uh, interest is protected here in this new seed bill, farmer is have a freedom. But secondly, what we are saying that uh, any seed which should be offered uh, for sale should be packed and packaging is mandatory uh, in the sense that uh, when we supply the seed uh, in a packed form, it contain one label and label contains certain information. That information are very important and vital for the quality of the seed which uh, farmers buy or any users buy from the market, from the private company or government agencies or university or ICR institute. It should be labeled. When we have a packing, along with the packing, labeling is there and labeling declares uh, uh, earlier in Seed Act 1966, there are three provision. You have to declare the genetic purity, physical purity, germination. These were the uh, mandatory requirement of labeling. In 2010, you would build the seed health was also introduced. 
and it was a it should be a welcomed step i as a scientist i welcome this step because number of uh, seed borne diseases are there if we give a a treatment to the seed before uh, uh, supplying to the farmer it will be very very useful to them because individual level at farmers level a uh, farmer cannot uh, adopt uh, such practice if i give an example we say you use 2 gram of seed for uh, seed treatment of 1 kg of seed if farmer is interested to grow a tomato in one acre area and it requires 100 gram seed so he has a difficulty in measuring that chemical how he will measure if there is a seed borne disease uh, which can be addressed through seed health parameter to be added as, as it was added in uh, new uh, seed bill in 2010 it was a very welcoming step because we can give a very good support uh, to the farmers and avoid the spread of the seed borne diseases uh, at a seed production level so we have to give the treated seed and as per the recommended chemical so that we can have a full control of that so in labeling uh, i i will come back to that point that uh, in new seed bill seed health one added and now this all four component genetic purity physical purity germination seed health and if seed are transgenic in nature so what event we have include and what uh, action it will take uh, give to the farmers that has to be compulsorily reflected on the seed label okay uh, you know mr sana when we are talking about labeling we are also talking about the fact as to the end uh, consumers of those seeds the farmers yeah. they also need to have some kind of an understanding of you know what the label is telling them Yeah. Uh, and you know what are existing mechanisms or what could be mechanisms for improving you know the knowledge of farmers because the government of india takes a number of schemes to inform farmers about the usage of seeds or good quality seeds you know i mean in in a basic sense if the seller is selling good stuff then the buyer will have belief and faith in that commodity and will go again next year so labeling is basically to induce the buyer to buy it the first time so so while labeling is the first step it is not an end in itself i mean today i might label my seed uh, packet and be able to sell it but suppose it doesn't do its job the next day just labeling won't do so basically we have to ensure that the seed being sold is good seed excellent seed being sold as a good seed whenever we talk about regulation we also have to talk about penalties and the new draft bill is increasing penalties from what the earlier 2004 bill had proposed uh, yes uh, uh, i do agree that the penalty increase proposal in the new seed bill uh, should take in a in a positive spirit if i am a seed businessman so i have to uh, give the assurance to the buyer that uh, if i am giving you the seed i fulfill all the requirements and if you can just tell us what that increase for different punishments in that will be useful yeah this, in this uh, new seed draft uh, bill uh, there are three provision where this uh, penalty has been enhanced one is the obstruction in performance of the duty like seed certification uh, staff or the seed if inspector if an officer of the government is performing yeah, his duty yeah perform his duty if yeah. there are obstructions then yeah. the earlier penalty was 5000 rupees or up to maximum 25000 now it has increased to 25000 to uh, 1 lakh uh, so, in that process so one of the things that you're saying is that across the board penalties have increased yes yes okay uh, uh, mr sana close the program for us by talking about the impact of this bill on farmers you know if if it leads to good certification and good regulation and with the supply of good seeds the impact on the farming community would be enormous because obviously the output would be better so the farmers livelihood will be fulfilled so to that extent it is a good thing also it is unavoidable because agriculture is not big business and it is too big 300 million tons of agriculture 300 million tons of horticulture obviously it has to be organized great and two thirds of the uh, country is somehow associated in one way or the other with agriculture uh, thank you mr sana thank you dr toma for joining us on this discussion it is time for us to end the show you can watch our shows on the rs tv page of youtube we will be back with a new issue and a new episode keep watching rajasabha tv